Happenet. Happenet? I don't know. Matrix Software. Cryware. TM. And hit it! Good thing I don't have a webcam because I was just doing like white, the most like one of just one of those white man can't dance dances. That's that's what I was doing. Here we go again. The twelfth time maybe I'm attempting to record this. Um, this is Brigandine, The Legend of Runerja. It is a I believe it was originally released on the Switch, possibly at the end of 2021. I uh, then it was released on PC. I think in the, around the summer-ish of 2022, we are going to start a new game. Uh, we're going to play... Well, it doesn't matter who we play. We're going to start a new game. We're going to play through the, 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 the main mode. And it should be fun. Um, this game is kind of like... I'm going to go with Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I'm going to say that's a pretty... Uh, just because I, I, that's, I think, on my channel. Yeah, it's on my channel. So, like, kind of, kind of like that. In terms of overall, like, play, but, like, also, uh, Dynasty Warriors Tactics is actually a better option. We'll go with Dynasty Warriors Tactics, even though you guys haven't seen that, I guess. It's not on my channel, but that's fine. We're going to play a new game, Bring a Dine, The Legend of Runeria. The Legend of Runeria. We're going to do it well, we're going to beat it, and we're going to talk about it, okay? All right, let's get to it. New game. Um, and weirdly enough, I think that they, 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 like... <laughs> there was a way I saw a way maybe maybe it was in the guides maybe I'm like maybe I read the manual but I saw other uh, modes at some point and I don't know if that was pre-update because there was an update they released uh, for the game so I'm not sure if they locked that behind an update after this like because it was supposed to be that way and they, they didn't mean for us to be able to access it or if I'm just looked at the manual and I I'm, I'm it's a fever dream who knows Anyway, Legend of Runerja main mode. Choose one of the six powers and reclaim the pages of the Legend of Runerja as you aim to unify the land. There's going to be an opening. I'm not going to sit here and watch it. I'm going to be playing around on my phone because this will be legitimately maybe the 15th or 16th time I've seen this opening. And I just can't. But you will enjoy it because you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Congratulations. It's a good opening. It's very nice. But it's, once you get to like number 14, you're done.我らが大地ルーナジオ マナを浴びるほどにその能力を いつしか彼らはルーンの騎士と呼ばれるようになったのじゃ。やがてルーンの幾つもの国が生まれ、そして幾つもの国が消え去った。その鎧あるいは総神宮にはそれぞれルーンの神から授かった 
それはそれは他の騎士を圧倒したのじゃよ大陸の覇権をかけた戦いは師匠ルーナジア戦記に克明に綴られ同時に戦いを通して我らが知り得たある大切な真実も記されることとなっただがあるルーンの騎士によってルーナジア全土が統一されると師匠はまるでそれを見届けたように戦火の中に消滅してしまったのだこの世界を訪れしそなたよ今ブリガンダインは正義高潔自由誇りそして自我の5つそなたにはそのいずれかを身にまといあるいは身にまとうことなく歴史に習い大陸制覇に向かう6つの道があるそしてそなたがルーナジアの各地を市中に収めてゆくたびに師匠ルーナジア戦記の失われたページはよみがえってくることだろうしかるに統一を果たした時そなたは知るのだこのルーナジアで起きたすべてのそしてあらゆる物語を The intro is so freaking good. I love that intro. I think it's fantastic. My only complaint is they missed such an easy opportunity, bro. If you've played Fire Emblem 7, there's the tactician who just appears and he just wakes up in the planes and then's like, You dumbass, you got hurt, right? <laughs> um, They missed the chance for this to be. What is what is it? Isekai? Isaki? Iseki anime? Isekai anime? Iseki anime? I think it's Iseki.、Um, I don't know. I don't know the pronunciation. But. Then just, just do that. Have it be like. Truck Kun just hit me. I'm calling it Truck. Okay, there's this game called Memento Mori AFK. And somebody put. Somebody called it Truck Kun. And I'm like, I'm obsessed with that name now. I just find it so funny. Anyway, Truck Kun should just hit me. And I should wake up here. And that intro would work perfectly for that, right? Like, hey, visitor from a foreign land, do, do, lead an army, do some shit, right? Like, it works perfectly. They missed the opportunity. That's, that's my one big criticism. Missed an opportunity. They had a fucking layup and they missed that. And I mean, come on. Come on. Or crane. Get, get hit by a crane, like in another, when the crane just rolls down the, the hill and, like, kills that kid on the second floor. Another is a great anime. Like, some people will shit on another, but, like, number one, they just don't got any taste in anime.、Uh, number two, they just don't understand. They don't understand. Another's a great anime. Number one, its visual style, pretty good. Its music, pretty good. All of the voice acting, I'd say pretty good. The basic story, I'd say pretty good.、Um, one of the most unintentionally funny anime. Just so many of those deaths were just like, just. Hilarious to watch. Kid getting struck by lightning, unintentionally funny. The crane killing a kid, unintentionally funny. The chandelier dropping on people, unintentionally funny. You know, like. And yet they have one of the most, like, like uncomfortable deaths, too, with the elevator. So, like, I mean, come on. It's, it's a great anime. It has a great idea. They just unintentionally made it funny at times.、Uh, <laughs> But it's so. I love that anime. I actually do really love that anime. I think it's a really good anime. Like, the basic story is so good. Anyway,、uh, great opening. Love it. Runerja, year 781. Five nations and one tribe plunge the land of Runerja into a new era of chaos. Six rulers and their rune knights throw themselves into the flames of war, each with their own hopes and expectations. I'm gonna try to keep everything as brief as I can now that I've made stupid jokes and wasted our time. Because this, this whole thing, this whole introduction, because there's a lot of exposition just in the just the start, once we get in,、um, it's probably gonna take an hour, possibly an hour and a half. 
and then and we won't even get to do a turn. The general consensus consensus of the devs and of other people is Holy Gustava and Mana Sleazia Theocracy are the hardest ones to play. Caveat if you're a beginner. If you're not a beginner, um, if you're more of a just a normal player, don't don't worry about it. If you know what you're doing in this game, every single nation has its own advantages and disadvantages. All in all, they're all about even. Go north of Leo if you're a beginner. If you're an experienced player, pick anything. It doesn't goddamn matter. All right. Now I'm just gonna let the the, the dialogue, and I'm gonna just let I'm gonna read their shit. Okay. North of Leo Kingdom, ruler Rubino. Rubino? He is the keeper of the Brigandine of Justice and heir to the throne of... No oh, I forgot how I did this. He is the keeper of the Brigandine of Justice and heir to the throne of North of Leo. Rubino's empathy for others and kind heart makes him loved by the people. He also possesses the strength of character to always do what is right. With the flames of war threatening to destroy his nation, Rubino IV steps onto the battlefield to fight in the name of justice. Five bases, 13 knights, 543 mana reserve, total monsters, 33. I don't really care about any, like, if you're looking, don't look at, don't, don't worry about these starting numbers. They don't mean anything, okay? Like, Gustavo will have at least knights, but they're going to get, they get like five guaranteed handed to them. So don't worry about these numbers. They don't really matter that much. The mana reserve is the only number that you really should even care about for the starting thing. But don't worry about any of that. Just don't. Their flag kind of sucks. You can't really distinguish the, the little wyvern dragon thing very well. Republic of Guy Mool. Buttons! Republic of Guy Mool. Ruler, Eliza Uzala. She is the daughter of Alden Uzala, the bedridden 15th president of the Republic of Gai Mool. The Sword of Ong awakens upon realizing the danger the country faces and tasks her with a life-changing mission. Previously a ballerina performing with a secret identity, she must now accept her fate to don the brigandine of glory and perform on the stage of battle. The Rose of the Battlefield. Um, high mana reserve, that's all you need to know there. Coolest, maybe the coolest flag. You can clearly see all three unicorns. Three pink, rose, red background. I like it. Holy Gustava Empire. Ruler Tim Gustav. He is the 13th emperor of the Holy Gustava Empire. Their land is barren and ridiculed by their neighbors, and they have no brigandine. Nevertheless, the Empire survived through strong family ties and the spirit of rebellion, which Tim calls the beautiful blood of the family. Tim aims to conquer Runergia, to vindicate the name and blood of his family. Mana Reserve 1007. Mana Silesia Theocracy. Ruler, Rudo Marco. Rudo, because he's a heel. <laughs> it's a wrestling joke. He is the legitimate son of Romanov, the holy sovereign of the Mana Silesia Theocracy. Long ago, the Mana Stone Thirty Years' War between the Republic of Gai Mul's Mohana sect and the Theocracy's Zai sect created a deep rift in the Rune faith. Rudo now dons the Brigandine of Sanctity in order to bring all of Runergia under the rule of the Zai sect. So he just kind of seems like an asshole. I'm just, just going to throw it out there. United Islands of Morelva. Oh, wrong button. Ruler Stella Hammett. She is the descendant of the legendary pirate Captain Hammett. The war has stirred up the wild pirate blood of the people of Morelva, and Stella decides to set off to conquer the, the whole of Runergia with the Brigandine of Ego. Decisive and spontaneous, 
She decides it would be best to strike before anyone else has a chance. Her actions are straightforward and direct. Okay. Um... Oh, Shinobi Tribe. Buttons! Ruler, Talia. The Shinobi Tribe is ruled by women who reside in a fortified village deep in the mountains and valleys of the former Hazam Nation. Their heirloom, the Brigandine of Freedom, represents the freedom these women have longed for. Talia, daughter of Chief Mother Della, fights for the future of the tribe, a future that won't be threatened by the wars of other nations. I love their flag, by the way. It's like so easy to see it. I love it. I'm going to end recording right here, make sure everything's working. And also, uh, I'm just going to tell you now that if you want the, to, to see the game's best storylines, I'm going to guess try uh, either Mana Silesia or the Gustava Empire. And the reason for that, I, they just seem like they're going to have the most interesting storylines to them because they're, they're, their protagonists are complicated ca uh, characters. We're going to be playing the Shinobi Tribe. And I'm going to briefly talk about the others later, but for right now, we'll just hop into Shinobi Tribe, and I'm going to say one more time, the story's not going to be great. Bear with the story for the beginning. I think it gets better for Shinobi. I think they get back on track a little bit. Um, but we're doing this for gameplay, because I think this is going to be the hardest faction play. Damn it! Let's go. I, I went straight to hard on my first time playing this. Had zero issue. I'm I'm not going to go back on that now. I'm going to play hard. Also, I'm choosing Shinobi for a reason. Because I'm expecting it to be the hardest one. For, uh, for how I play. For my play style. I mean, if you were playing on, you know... Some, some crap difficulty with, like, a limit that let you just sit in turtle for 25 billion years. Sure, yeah, then Shinobi's easy as hell. Then you can just sit there and level and min-max and shit. I don't do that crap. I don't sit in turtle on this game. Even on my first playthrough, I was out aggressive attacking. Sophie got her levels by fucking fighting. I didn't have her sitting in a training ground looking at porn until she got to level 10. Like what some people apparently do. No, she was out there kicking ass. She earned those levels in the flames of war. Hell yeah, let's go. We'll keep the guide on in case there's anything I need to be refreshed on. But also, I just want you to see the guide. It's actually like you don't need to play the tutorial for this game. It's pretty, as long as you've played something similar to this ever, you'll probably be able to figure this out. It's a pretty beginner friendly game i'd say like there's nothing overly complex but if you don't you know if you're if you use the guide you're 1000 percent fine the guide is a, basically a, a god tier manual it's really good keep it on if it's your first time playing i'm keeping it on just because this is my second time playing but i it's been a year and a half so just in case i need a refresher rune growth oh yeah i didn't even get to read that that was probably actually really good to read I have learned if I speed this up, there's a chance I skip it on accident. So, like, you can't just hold X because it'll skip through shit. So, we just have to use a, a virtue known as patience to successfully read this. Deep in the mountains and valleys of the former Hazam Nation lies the fortified all-female village of the Shinobi tribe. Okay, I'm, I'm, like I said, I just want to reiterate this one more time for you. The Shinobi story sucks in the beginning. It gets a little bit back on track by the time they're about to start us on first turn. So, just know this story is going to be kind of stupid at the start. And I'm sorry that I picked this faction for that reason, but like, gameplay-wise, I think this is our best bet. What button is it? I forgot to change the sound effects volume. I'll do that as soon as we're done, if I remember. Long ago... These women used their own form of witchcraft, known as shinobi magic, to drive away any and all men. Oh, 
I'll tell you, by the way, when we get to, like, what, what the actual shittier part of the story. It's not this. This part's weird. It's the part immediately after. So, in order to continue the legacy of the village, once a woman turns 18, she is able to bathe in the spring of the Ivory Dragon. The Ivory Dragon's a cool name. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him that. It is by soaking in its water that the women of the Shinobi tribe are blessed with children. And, yes, really weird. So we just say magic and we move on or they're crayfish <laughs> because it's a fucking pond right it works they're crayfish guys i have uh i have some brown marbled crayfish that are uh banned in almost everywhere <laughs> i got them before the ban so i'm allowed to keep them but they're banned everywhere basically because they uh they asexually reproduce so they just clone themselves, and it's it's fucked, but I love them, they're great. And this is where the story gets weird, and then it continues to be a little bit weird. And then it gets back on track. Oh, how we'll do this, by the way, so all there's voice acting, right, but it's all, like, in Japanese. I'm just going to read it plainly to you afterwards, because I know some people just don't watch videos, they just listen. So I'll read it afterwards, but I'll also try to tell you who's speaking at any time, just so that you can kind of familiarize whose voice is with what character. And hopefully that'll be fine. I'm not going to do any kind of voicing or anything, because I'm just not, that's, I'm not doing that. But on this day, Talia and Ray were present to give witness to the birth of a friend's child. Just a little more, Meg. You can do this. That was Talia, the, uh, the leader of the faction. That is Ray. You're certain to have a strong baby girl. I'll teach her all there is to know of our craft. <laughs> Careful, Ray. She may not want to come out if she hears that you'll be her teacher. And this is why this is such a weird opening. Because, no, like... What is, like, what is this opening, A? B, they're just like, do 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 having fun or some shit while someone's, you know, in the middle of a pregnancy. It's like, sorry, I didn't know labor was such a, jo a jovial ha-ha time. Oh, come now. Aren't I the reason why everyone calls you the best shinobi in the village now? Yes, yes. Well, you're also the reason that I still have the scars as a testament to my training. Well, that's your fault, actually. I mean, you should have been better. <laughs> this is Medessa. It has been quite the labor, but the baby should be here any moment. Yes, but she does seem to be in a lot of pain. Yeah, it's kind of like you guys shouldn't just be having a joking, jovial time while someone's in a pregnancy. It's weird. Perhaps it would be best for her to sleep for a while. Spellcraft. And I don't know if this is a real word. Shamanka? Shamanka? I don't know if that's a real word. Shamanka Medessa was a master of shinobi magic. As she brought her hands together to form several seals, a gentle wave of energy began to radiate. And in an instant, the pregnant Meg was asleep. Like the shark... The spell had made young Talia feel slightly uncomfortable, as she had the feeling that it was not entirely benign. What was that for? Calm yourself, Talia. This is your first time assisting with a birth, correct? 
Yes, but I don't understand. Oh dear, it's a boy, isn't it? A boy? But how do you even know? The baby hasn't even been... My mother just knows. Right, mother? After nodding sadly to her daughter, Ray, Medessa moved from Meg's side carrying a healthy baby. It was, indeed, a boy. So, so it can't be! How, what, what is the probability? Like, almost 50%? That's impossible! Taria, you you would think if they had like a convoluted method of inducing pre I, why am i even why am i even talking about this who cares this is a dumb storyline but you would think it would just like only produce female children or something it's fucking magic anyway right your guys's magic sucks i'm just saying it your guys's magic sucks talia as the daughter of chief mother della you know the rules better than anyone yeah, and the rules suck, and also they're made to be broken. And I am the rules. How many more lines can we throw? <laughs> Males are not permitted to live in this village. And so, if a male is born to one of us... <laughs> He must be separated from his mother at once, and sent to fosterage. It is our way. Talia, take this child to the edge of the forest before Meg awakens. Meg was so excited about becoming a mother. For the women living within this fortified village, it was a cruel law. But it was also an indication of how little the women felt they could trust males. Y'all are dumb. In order to earn foreign cur- By the way, new scene. We just leave all that behind. It's like, okay, here we go. Moving on. In order to earn foreign currency, the women of Shinobi Village use their expertise in Shinobi magic to work in other nations as guards or intelligence operatives. Even though they're also really good at, like, medical treatment stuff, so... They could do that, but nah. <laughs> On this particular day, in Zai, the capital city of Mana Silesia, Talia was on guard duty with Rei, whom she looked up to like a sister. <laughs> Even this late in the day, the Mana Spring sure is busy. So many people. At this rate, I won't be able to go out at all tonight. And I was having such a good time with a young male from the tavern last night, too. You see, like, that immediately gets weird. It's like, yeah, I'm having fun with males, but they aren't allowed in our place. And it's like, okay, guys. Like, either be consistent or just don't, you know? You don't have to have any of this storyline. It could have very well just have been, fuck, we don't like males because they just, they beat us or something. And then, okay, move on. But we don't like, we just don't want them in our particular area, but we're, like, fine with them existing, you know, in, in outside of our city, right? And just, like, have it be pronounced as, as that kind of dynamic where it's like, oh, we're fine with them. And just, you know, if you want to have your, you know, your son, Meg, you, here's your choice. You either can stay with us and not have the son or you can move out to the outer village, like the outer towns that are still in our, like, overall lands. And that's where the males are. Whatever. You could have had something like that and it would have been fine. And just be like, yes, because we, we didn't like being abused by, you know, men or whatever. Okay. And then, and then the Shinobi tribe's motivation for getting involved in the wars of Runeresha could have been very simple. It could have been, 
God damn, we're tired of having to send our people out on like mercenary jobs and shit to make money. Like we shouldn't have to do that. And our people are never given like good jobs, like as healers and stuff. They're always used as guards for dangerous, uh, you know, in dangerous places or or intelligent. Yeah, the job they're they're given jobs that are 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 more dangerous than the average mercenary, and that's we're being exploited, and we we aren't happy about that, and the, and the. The whole of Runeria sucks anyway because everybody's fighting and shit. So we're gonna just we're gonna make a more equitable society. Like that could have been there, and that would have been a fine storyline, and we all would have moved on, and we wouldn't have had to have any of this weirdo shit that's going on. I'm just saying. Ray, you'd better be more careful. What if Chief Mother or Medessa found out about what you've been doing? Oh, poo. Don't spoil what little fun I get to have outside of the fortress village. You really should give males a try too, Talia. They're a lot more fun than going to that silly spring, that's for sure. Oh, ew. What about my elo? I'll pass, man. I think that's enough, Ray. <laughs> that Sid. Would you silly shinobi be quiet? That's quite, quite, that's quite rude of you, mister. And from the looks of it, you seem to be a fellow hired hand, huh? Let me guess, you're one of those Hazam males, right? Oh, you have a problem with the Hazam? Hazam? Indeed, I'm afraid I have to pass when it comes to males from Hazam. No matter how good looking they may be. And now, if he was a Chad, he would say, Oh, thanks, I am pretty good looking. Just as well that I feel the same way about you lot, then. I love this guy, by the way. I just like how he's so standoffish. I love Sid. Come again? Alright, Ray, just give it a rest. This is Jose. I'm gonna guess you just pronounce those Jose. I don't know. How else would you pronounce that name? I don't know. Ah, what have we here? The ladies of Shinobi Village? I do hope Sid here hasn't said anything untoward or to you. Untoward to you. At least Morelva, they're out there getting like drunk in a tavern or some shit, like right now. Their, their starting story is they're getting drunk in a tavern and having a fucking blast. Because they're about to have like a meeting of all like the pirate leaders from the islands and shit. So they're just having a fucking blast at a tavern getting... getting... Trashed. They're getting wasted. It's it's wonderful. And we're out here having some minor drama with childbirth and talking about lowering Elo. Besides his untoward language, his behavior when it comes to women is truly appalling. Isn't that right, Talia? Don't bring me into this. All I care about is my Elo. Talia this to Mother Talia. You must be the daughter of Chief Mother Della. Oh yes, I am. Are you an acquaintance of my mother's? <laughs> no, I'm actually the leader of these mercenaries. You may call me Jose. And as you can probably tell, I've also worked as a scout for some time now. Oh, 
and I wouldn't be a very good scout if I were unfamiliar with the leader of Shinobi Village. Suddenly, the sound of an explosion rang through the night from behind the tower of the General Zai Memorial. What was that? It's the Gustavans. Oh, fuck, not the Gustavans. By the way, what a complex name. Gu Tim Gustava? Two different cultures. Like, two different cultural naming. Like, t yeah, two different cultures. It's, it's like Tim and Gustav. It's like, what? <laughs> what? It can't be. Oh, it can. Oh, it's real. It's damn real. But Sid was off without another moment's hesitation, because he's a Giga Chad. As expected of the man with instincts so sharp, he'd been given the nickname, The Wolf. Through these instincts, he had already gained information on the Gustavan spies that had been smuggling explosives into the country. Damn. Come, Talia. We can't let this Hazam male show us up now, can we? I mean, we can and should. We still get paid either way. Whether we do any work or not, we're getting paid. If they do all our work, that's fine. We still get paid. Ray was more than eager to prove herself to that Hazam man. Man. I, I was going to go with male because that's just how she's been referring to him. I was just used to it now. But that would prove to be her undoing. That night would be the last that Talia saw Ray alive. Bum bum ba dum. Because the code of the Shinobi tribe says that if they're captured, they have to end their own lives, because it, that makes sense somehow. She wasn't even, like, grabbed, right? Like, she was barely grabbed. Talia's right there. And she's like, not nah, damn, gotta blow myself up now, I guess. Like, it's such a stupid story. It's uh, like, I, uh, we're self-destructing autonomons, uh, fuck, just, <laughs> we're self-destructing robots, basically, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of really dumb, <laughs> like, oh shit, my programming says I've been captured, I guess I'd best blow up now, like, it's so stupid, I just, it's, uh, this is Della, by the way, you wish to raise an army, Talia, what is the meaning of this? Chief Mother, Oh Mother, this land of Runerja is in a state of unrest. Tensions between the Zai sect of Mana Silesia and the Mohana sect in Gaimul are near a breaking point. King Rubino III of Norzalio is dead, long live the new king, and now the Gustava have marched into their territory. And then, and then that attack by the Gustavans, if only they hadn't. I know. Ray would still be with us today. No, you idiot! If we didn't have these stupid shinobi codes, Ray would still be with us, because I could have saved her! I was right there! You don't understand! Mother, Mother, if we continue to turn a blind eye and lend our peoples to the whims of these countries, it is inevitable that we will lose more good women like Ray. Like that text right there, this block right here, you could have built the entire backstory of the Shinobi around that. You could have just had that be their 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 reason to exist. Like that's what that's why we're getting involved. <laughs> 
タリアいくら母と子であってもマザーに対し少し言葉が過ぎますよ Talia, even if you are her flesh and blood, you will watch your tone when speaking to the chief mother. I'll watch my fist hit your face. But I do love this line. Mother, you are a coward! Well, you are. You of all people should know. Better than anyone. We, we can't just continue like this. And yet, I do nothing. That is what you want to say, isn't it? Chief Mother. But I do nothing out of a desire to protect this village. You should know this, Talia. If that's true, then you're... You're no better than the men driven from the village by our ancestor matriarchs. What? Instead of standing up against the larger countries, the men of Hazam chose to bow their hand heads, their hands, <laughs> chose to bow their heads and sell their services just to survive. As a result, their freedom was stolen, and the pride of. The pride of the men were disgraced, and instead of taking it out on their oppressors, they came back to the village and took it out on their women. We had lost our freedom and our dignity. Hey, you know, you know what there should be? Like a fucking zero domestic abuse. There, sh there really isn't ever like a reason that that should be acceptable or even like, oh yeah, this makes sense. No, it should never make sense. Guys just shouldn't be pieces of shit. I mean, that's weird. That's so weird that, that someone would make that statement that people just shouldn't be pieces of shit. It's crazy. Wow. We should have zero tolerance towards like that's such a, I don't know how that's a hard take. But that's why we created this fortress in the first place, isn't it? So that we would have the freedom to stand on equal ground with any other nation. The freedom? Okay. I'm just gonna say it. Talia, put on clothing. Number one, put on clothing. You're like 17. Put on some fucking clothes. Two, I don't care how warm the forest is. There's still like brambles and shit, so put on some clothes anyway. Three, um, Japan, stop hypersexualizing people and stop doing things that are intentionally to draw gazes to places. If she was 25, I would not give a shit. I'd be like, whatever. Right? I'd be like, it's, I still don't like it, but I'd say whatever. Yeah, I'd be like, okay, I don't care. She's 25, whatever, it's fine. But she's 17, so maybe don't do all the things you just did. Just saying. Kind of kind of uh, not, not cool, guys. And so, with the blessing of Chief Mother Della, Talia came to don the brigandine of freedom. Then set off to conquer the world. Yes, a totally reasonable uh, response to her friend's death. I'ma take the whole world out, bitches. Moved by Ray's courageous display, Jose and Sid join Talia and Uncle Toby 
a half-wild Bazu, half-fairy master of shinobi magic on par with the late Rei. And lastly... Talia, I cannot bear to lose another daughter. I'm coming along whether you like it or not. Thank you, Medessa. Sir Jose and Sid. <laughs> I have heard that you took good care of my daughter Ray. Madam Medessa, my only regret is that I could not do more. I know it may not be my place, but your daughter. Her death was an honorable one, worthy of such a talented shinobi master. <laughs> When we heard you were raising an army, we left as soon as we could. Sid and I are at your service. Much appreciated. Talia, the Chief Mother has requested that you keep her informed of our movements. Of course. Okay. Hey, look, it's the guide. That's like the basic story of Shinobi. Kind of sucked. Like, at least Morelba's story is funny the entire time. Just a bunch of drunkards. I love it. I'm going to just show these. I'm not going to read them. If you want to read this, you can pause and like look at it. But uh, I mean, it really doesn't matter to you guys unless you're playing. And then you can read it in the game. I don't need to read any of this. I'm, I'm, I'm well, I probably should read some of this, but I don't, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to assume that I know what I'm doing and I'm just going to see what happens. Hey. So this is the overworld screen. 781, one season mana um there are 25 turns i think is how the math will work for 2.5 years for hard mode i think it's 25 turns or something like that i think it's maybe it's 26 20 something like it's something in the 20s oh it's it's just right there 24 turns i'm stupid uh that's how long we have look at this lovely little like overworld Kind of like, uh, like I said, kind of like Dynasty Warriors Tactics. Everything's kind of like Dynasty Warriors Tactics here. And, uh, Fire Emblem, not Fire Emblem, and, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics as well. Kind of, we're kind of working, kind of cooking in the same, same, uh, way with how the bases and stuff kind of work. Each base has a fixed amount of income that they generate per turn, of mana they generate per turn. Also, there's no fog of war, as you can clearly see. You can kind of wander around and look at anything anytime you want. Um, which I like and don't like. Uh, it makes the game definitely much easier. But you can see all the mana values of bases and blah 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 and bloody blue. Um, and so you can kind of determine where you want to attack based on mana if you want. But, uh, we don't, we, that's not too much of an importance right now. So I kind of want to go over just some things. Um, and we will, oh, by the way, this is nation statistics thing. This is pretty cool. This will show you all the information that you want to know, possibly ever. Uh, you can see how many knights, monsters, total combat power that you have, uh, as well as the mana reserve you're currently sitting on, what your income is, what your upkeep is, and what your expected mana income is per turn. That can kind of variate. That's why it's expected, because it can kind of have a variation every now and then um, that the game doesn't, uh, doesn't calculate. So don't take that as the gospel, but generally speaking, your man if it says expect the man income 788, it's gonna be that's gonna probably be what you're getting. But you can also see every opponent's full details, their full deteats, their full deteats. You can see all of it. Which kinda of broken, but I mean it's it's 
cool, I guess. Um, so you can see, like, right away, I have the lowest combat power of the Shinobi. Don't worry about that. That really doesn't mean anything. The combat power doesn't mean shit. So, don't worry too much about that. Just don't worry about any of these stats. Because all this looks complicated. Seems like something that should matter. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. Every nation's about equal in strength over the long term. Right? Each one just has different strategies going forward. That's all you have to look at it as. If you're a player who turtles, you're not aggressive, don't pick Mana Silesia. Don't pick Gustava. Pick Norzalia or, or Shinobi. That, those are the turtle nations. Morelva works as a turtle nation too. I'm gonna be honest. Morelva's really hard to crack if they're if they're attacking you. I mean, it's so easy to defend Morelva. Because it's water and you have only water critters. You can see all sorts of info. Like, I can see, you know, my bases, my knights, my monsters. But I can also do that for everyone. Okay. In that field. I'm also able to just go to, like, their base. And I can actually look at their full team as well. Um, and we'll kind of walk through some things and talk about some things in a little bit. But we're not going to do that right now. We'll do that next episode, I think. Because we're probably running at about an hour right now. Alright, next time we're going to uh, briefly... Next time we'll briefly look at all of our people read their backstories. I'm then going to move people into the groups that I want them to be in. And I'm going to probably summon monsters and hope to God that I get some rares. And, uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, um, if I, I have the footage still for my Morelva run, I'll probably go through it and I'll try to like put up a couple of videos of, of like just the best moments or the funniest fight, like the coolest fights or something. Um, like the time where I was like, can poison kill my creature? I'm not going to heal it. And then it died from poison. That was a pretty good time. I'll do stuff like that. Because I think it'll be good. But, uh, we'll see. Because it just depends on how Shadowplay recorded and how much, how, how had everything come out. Yeah. I had, uh, basically I was running a bunch of water critters. And then I, and then I got bronze golems and dragons but most of my shit was water critters for a really long time and then i started specializing in undead for some reason yeah it was it was a weird time i don't know i'm a, I'm a weirdo like that so we'll see what happens this time we'll see what we do with this one but yeah that'll do it for this episode i know we didn't even get to play a game yet and i have a lot of editing to do i'm probably just gonna cut out most of my like vamping and shit uh most of my opinions and just let the story be what it is, because like we just need to get through the story. We have to get through the story so that we can then play the game. But it's really long. So yeah, next 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 episode, we move some people, we get some uh, some summons, and then turn two, we'll actually be able to fight. It'll be pretty cool.